Let's take a closer look at building dependent dropdowns, this time doing it with a script rather than a formula. You can look at my previous video about dependent dropdowns with formulas if you want a closer look at those. And at the end, I do talk about some drawbacks. The advantages of using a script are twofold primarily. First, having multiple levels of dependent dropdowns is easier to track with a script. You don't have to have convoluted ranges in order to make that work. Secondly, if you are going to have the same dependent dropdown hierarchy operating on multiple rows, it's much easier to set that up with a script rather than a formula. So what I'm saying is if we want to use this dependent dropdown, it's going to be three columns wide, three choices wide. If we're going to use that same set on row two and row three and row four, it's a lot easier to do that on script rather than on a level. So I've already done my setup. And here's what our levels are going to be. First, the user selects an entree or side. So what type of, you know, what type of meal is being had? Then if it's an entree, do they want chicken or beef? And if it's side, do they want hot or cold? If they chose a chicken entree, there's these options. A beef entree, there's these options. A hot side, there's these options. A cold side, there's these options. Okay. So we can actually go ahead and set up the first data validation. And because data validation automatically removes any blanks, it's fine to have this blank cell in there. We can just go all the way, no problem. So here I have entree or side. Okay. Now I want to show you what's going to happen when I run this or when I select that. I don't want to select it without going through this first. So of course, an on edit trigger. And this one we can do a simple trigger. We don't have to do an installable trigger at all. I've set it to return or to quit the script if we are not editing the script file, the script tab, or if we're editing a column further than two. So if we're editing column three or further, column C or further, I don't want the script to run. And I declare the setup sheet where all of these values are held. And I'm actually going to get the entire range all at once before we even check which column, which row, which cell was edited. As we talked about before, the best thing to do is to pull all the data at once and push all the data at once rather than picking and choosing which data is pulled in. Just manipulate it all in the script. So I'm pulling the entire data range, get data range here, and getting all the values. That should give me this range as a two-dimensional array. I like declaring variables above the if statements if either if statement has the possibility of instantiating them. So in this case, I'm going to declare the rule and the i variables here, and the rule gets declared here and here, and i gets instantiated here and here. I'm getting the range where this is the range where I want the next drop down to go. Okay, so get the range and offset it by zero rows and one column. So if we edit column, if we edit cell A2, I want B2. And then my if statement just asks, did we edit column one or column two? One, column two. And that's important to declaring the rule for the next drop down. So I, if it, we edited column one, if we edited A, then I want to get in the first row of the data of the array that we pulled out of setup. Right, so that's vowels zero. So this is the first row of the array. What was the index where the edit value was found? So in here, where do we find what the user put in here? Okay, was that, and that's along the first row, right? So this row, was it array index zero? or array index two. That's what we're getting here. The rule we're creating. 
spreadsheet app dot get new data validation. That's the builder for creating a new uh, a new data validation rule. We're going to use dot require value in range. That's what we want. We want to send a range into that data validation. Get the setup sheet and get the range. Now on here, this is the part where it's really going to be important to look at your data and make sure this matches your data. But on mine, we're getting row two here. The column is important. This is what's declared based on the, well, what's stored in that I value. Right, so if we did entree, we're going to do array index zero plus one gets us column A. Or if here, it's going to get us this. So I plus one, since the spreadsheet is one indexed and the array is zero indexed, one row, two columns. So again, we're going to get either C and C two through D two or A two through B two. Do not allow invalid entries and then build it, basically confirm the rule. If it was column index two, then we are not looking at the first level of the dependent dropdowns. We're looking at the second level, right? So on subtype, we're looking at these. So in that case, look at row two here and get the index of the value input. So if we chose chicken, return 0, 1, 2, 3. And here we're going to use row 3, right here. For the column, we're using i plus 1. And we want three rows. And we don't have to declare a column because it's the column is the last optional. And we're getting just a single column. Again, set allow invalid false and go ahead and build it. Then set the data validation rule to cell R or range R, which is why I declared variable R to be one column over from where the edit occurred. Let's come back here and test it. I've already created the data validation for A2. Let's say an entree. There we go. So it actually created the entire data validation. And here, let's do a beef. And we can choose one of these. Let's go ahead and copy the, let's go ahead and first delete entree so that it doesn't throw off. Entree, and it creates it. Chicken. And we have the three options. Side dish, hot, we have all the options, side dish, old, and there's all the options. All right, so that's how you set it up in a script, is make sure your setup is, or your, your range of values, your array of values is correct, and then it's just making sure that the get range matches from your setup area.